Hello and welcome to the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week is the turn of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, or otherwise known as HLH, because quite frankly, that's a little bit of a mouthful to say uh, uh, each time. So what is HLH? Well, it's a condition where the body makes too many activated immune cells, so macrophages, as histiocytes and the lymphocytes. Um, and so it's actually a collection of various disorders. So automotive, autosomal recessive or familial disorders, otherwise known as primary um, uh, HLH. Uh, it can also be a consequence of overactive uh, T cell um, and it's usually been uh, made overactive by EBV and so you can have a chronic active uh, EBV uh, uh, type uh, syndrome or disease going on. Uh, you can also have familial um, erythral uh, phagocytic uh, lymphohistocytosis. These are all a horrible mouthful. Uh, also viral associated hemophagocytic syndrome and uh, autoimmune associated macrophage activation syndrome, which is just known as MASS. So it's a collection of diseases as opposed to just one uh, single disease. So what are the causes? Well, they're you can split these causes up into two, either uh, primary or secondary. So primary is also known as familial, um, aka uh, inherited uh, form of um, HLH. And there are generally five types. So type one is uh, cytochrome nine, uh, type two is PRF1, type three, UNC13D, type four, STX11, and type five, STX um, P, uh, BP. Uh, and these genes, uh, in theory, turn off and, and, and allow um, inact um, inactive uh, immune cells, or should I say active Im uh, immune cells that are no longer required, uh, so they can then be destroyed. Uh, but if those genes are inhibited, and then obviously they uh, start getting overrun and they start uh, attacking uh, the parts of the body. And now there are, there are a few, there's lots of mutations, and there's more being discovered um, uh, every few years. And so there was, it is the uh, RAB27A mutation, and that uh, is basically called Rosselli. Uh, syndrome, and you've also got the lice mutation, which is the uh, Chet Dyak uh, Higashi uh, syndrome. Now, they're all primary. Uh, the secondary causes are what's called acquired. Now, for the vast majority of time, uh, there are, uh, it is EBV, it's Epson-Barr virus, it's the same virus that gives you glandular fever, and it's a form of uh, human herpes virus, uh, type uh, 4, if I believe. Um, and the uh, human herpes uh, virus, uh, EBV, uh, someone gets infected, and the mechanism for trying to slow down EBV uh, it doesn't quite work. Uh, and so higher viral loads of BB, EBV are generally seen in acquired uh, or secondary HLH. And so uh, medications that uh, suppress the immune system uh, also can cause uh, secondary uh, HLH, uh, autoimmune diseases, immunodeficiencies, and so um, uh, other infections that reduce um, the immune system, for example, HIV, and you have also uh, other certain types of cancer or metabolic uh, diseases. Now, in children, when HLH is due to an appropriate response to EBV, this may be due to a linked uh, lymphoproliferative disease, otherwise known as XLP, and a quarter of adult males um, with EBV HLH also have this particular mutation, uh, in other words, um, an XLP as well. And so EBV does very much seems to be um, a, a driver with it, but lots of viruses uh, can cause uh, secondary uh, um, HLH. So obviously you've got the uh, RNA retrovirus, which is HIV, but you can also have a long list of DNA viruses uh, from Hep B, CMV, uh, VZV, uh, HHV8, which can cause Carposis sarcoma, um, uh, uh, HSV, parvovirus, and adenone virus. And it's interesting to note that HSV neonates in, in pregnancy and HHV8 and VZV and CMV, as well as EBV are uh, all types of uh, human herpes viruses uh, and so uh, uh, it, it, you've got many drivers here for HLH but EBV is without a doubt the most common. 
There are also RNA virus, and a lot of these are a little bit rarer, to be honest with you. Uh, I've never seen Crimea and Congo hemorrhagic fever, uh, but obviously measles is common, but it's a rare cause of HLH, and you've got dengue, rubella, SARS, very rare, um, a rotavirus. Uh, interestingly, whether um, COVID-19 will cause, um, sorry, uh, SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, causes uh, secondary HLH. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. There's been none reported, but it's only a matter of time, I suppose. So what are the signs and symptoms of HLH, either primary or secondary? Well, you've got um, and in, and for familial um, HLH, they tend to develop these symptoms in the first few months or years of, of life. But obviously these can also happen in adults. You tend to get a fever, enlarged uh, liver or spleen, skin rash, lymph node in, uh, enlargement, breathing problems, easy, uh, easy bruising or abnormal bleeding, uh, which would give a sign of platelet dysfunction, uh, kidney abnormalities, heart problems, an increased uh, risk of certain cancers, most notably uh, the leukemias and lymphomas. And so how do you diagnose HLH? Well, it can be HLH established if um, uh, two of the following are fulfilled. So the first one, and it can just be number one, a genetic test to identify a mutation in one of the genes which I've previously uh, identified. And so if, if someone's got that mutation, then they will see, uh, and they've got the signs of HLH, then you've got your diagnosis. Uh, however, if you can't find one of those genes, and let's face it, those gene tests can't be done with the drop of a hat, then you need five out of the following eight signs and symptoms. Um, fever, uh, enlarged spleen, cytopenia, uh, elevated levels of triglyceride or sometimes low levels of fibrogen in blood, uh, Hemophagocytosis, which is a certain type of blood cells um, uh, uh, by uh, histiocytes on, on bone marrow, so that's done by a spleen or lymph node biopsy. Uh, decrease or absent natural killer uh, cell activity. Uh, this is a very difficult one to measure, uh, and that's usually done by uh, a radioactive 51 um, a chromium release assay. Um, and uh, high levels of ferritin in the blood. That's the times I've seen it because ferritin is a very easy um, uh, test to do. And the ferritin levels, I'm not talking raised up to a thousand, I'm talking over 10,000 here. Um, and so I've seen one or two cases where we thought it was HLH, but the ferritin only actually got up to around about 5,000. And it wasn't, it was just because ferritin can be an inflammation marker as well. Um, and so usually you're looking at 10,000 plus um, in the HLH, but you need some of the other symptoms and the other uh, problems as well. And you also need elevated levels of uh, CD25, and not all labs can do that one. So in realistically, you're going to be looking at um, um, a cytopenia, enlarged spleen, fever, uh, uh, high levels of um, uh, ferritin in the blood uh, and looking out with the symptoms as well and then uh, considering uh, whether this is HLH and then the person going off to do a, um, uh, a biopsy. So the best uh, treatment options for HLA are determined by the severity of the symptoms uh, and the age of onset and the underlying cause of the condition. Now for familial HLH you effectively need a stem cell uh, transplant uh, and that way uh, you can be cured of familial HLH and um, uh, uh, and, and ideally you need this treatment as quickly as possible. And so you have chemotherapy to wipe out your own immune system and then you have uh, the transplant and hopefully it will uh, take. So the treatment for HLH, which is acquired, um, uh, so you, you basically have to treat it as aggressively as you can. So if you're suspecting it, you treat it really aggressively with standard HLH protocols. The exception to this is leishmaniasis related HLH, which is quite uh, fairly rare and only treated with liposomal amphotericin. Now, uh, EBV is really poorly responsible to antiretroviral a uh, agents. So taking acyclovir, vancyclovir, gancyclovir um, and all the other stuff uh, doesn't really work with EBV. However, EBV uh, lives in either the epithelial cells or it lives in B lymphocytes and they can be rapidly depleted by using uh, B cell targeting monoclonal antibody, in other words, rituximab. And so rituximab is usually slung in uh, to the treatment as well, especially if the individual has a, a detectable or and a high uh, EBV viral load. 
Uh, now, treatment uh, options uh, vary, and there is a HLH 2004 protocol, and that uh, basically have DEXA, which is dexamethasone, um, etop um, etoposide uh, 4, uh, which is twice weekly, cyclosporin A, 6 milligrams per kilogram daily, and then intensification of treatments may require uh, methotrexate, or plus or minus um, valancyclovir. Um, and you only do that when myelotoxicity is not the primary concern. So that's a very a medical um, uh, decision on that one. Depends very much on uh, the results and how the patient is doing. And you also got the supportive therapy, so clotrimoxazole, which knocks out uh, the person's, um, uh, which protects uh, the person's. Um, uh, lungs from infection and also um, uh, a gastro uh, uh, protectant, so PPI, uh, because of all the steroids. So the prognosis of HLH, well, for familial, it's unfortunately very poor. So the medium survival is less than two uh, to six months after diagnosis, and even with treatment, uh, 21 to 26 uh, percent, five up to five years. However, with transplant, uh, I believe uh, that can be uh, a lot better, but it's a question of whether the transplant takes and stem cell transplants uh, are not an easy decision to make because they themselves carry a high mortality rate as well. Uh, and you also got um, acquired um, uh, and so the prognosis of that tends to be a little bit lower than familial um, uh, but it's not good unfortunately and if it's associated with um, a tumour especially a T-cell lymphoma and also if it's driven by EBV, uh, again, the mortality is unfortunately uh, relatively uh, high. And so it is not, um, uh, if you get the diagnosis of HLH, um, it's not great, unfortunately. Uh, however, more treatments are coming uh, al along all the time. And so it's worth uh, keeping up uh, to date uh, with um, any research that is uh, being done. And you might be able to get yourself on to um, a clinical trial. So here are uh, some of the references I've got here and these are some of the websites I've used and so if you want a, a, a quick review on, on what to uh, read primaryimmune.org which is a, a great website uh, and it's got a great article on um, HLH and I would recommend anyone uh, wherever you are on this planet if you want to know more about HLH in a simple readable form go to this um, um, uh, website primaryimmune.org um, okay, so thank you very much, and I hope you uh, liked it, and if you do, subscribe and share. Thank you very much. Take care.